Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is for the November Snacku box. And if you're checking these unboxing videos out of mine for the first time, this is a Japanese snack box that you can get every month. Uh, they also have a tasting size, which is a lot smaller if you don't want to commit too much and you want to, or you want to spend less. Um, so the, the tasting size actually ships from New York in the United States, I believe. And, but the actual like full size box ships from somewhere in Japan. So it takes a little bit longer for this to get here. So, um, I gotta be honest, I'm not actually all that excited about this month's box just because it is like a tea themed and I think it's specifically like matcha and I don't really like matcha. I find it to be way too vegetal for my flavor or for my palate for what I like flavor wise. So I'm not that excited about it, but I'm sure there'll be like one or two things at least that I'll like in here because that's, you know, how it's been with these boxes. I always find at least something. Let me see if I can check this. Make this. No? Okay. That's weird. It's just kind of like low lighting. I'm trying to see if I can fix it, but oh well. I'll, I'll fix it in post, potentially. Okay, so as you can see, the theme is, oh, there we go, tea with a little teapot, some little biscuits, biscuits or cookies, depending on where you're from. You would call it that. Okay, and if people want to, I'm not going to read the thing at the top, but here you go. If you want to, you can st you can pause on that. And then we have the featured snacks. We have the popular snacks. Oh, they decided to lay it out differently because usually it's like one on one side and one on the other side. It's um, it's usually the featured snacks on this side and the popular snacks on this side. So, oh no, they're laying it out differently. Okay, so let's get into it and show you what it looks like in there. Have I been doing that? I hope I've been doing it. Look chock full of stuff. All right, so hopefully I find some things I really like in here. All right, so first... Let's jump to this. this. Okay, so there's a few of these. These look kind of similar. So first we're going with this. Salty Senbai, and this is under the popular snacks area. Very light and airy rice cracker topped with Japanese salt. I mean, it's a pretty run-of-the-mill looking Senbai. No frills. Just going to be salty, I assume. Does smell a little fishy. Not a lot though. See that? I smell that it's salty though. Very nice and crunchy. Very typical rice cracker flavor. And it does have a decent saltiness to it actually. Usually the the salt is lower on these things, but I actually like this really kind of aggressive saltiness that it's got going on here. It's kind of a nice change of pace. I like something real salty every now and then. Th this would go very great with, you know, having a beer. I like to have some craft beer here and there. I actually do a craft beer podcast. It's called Brutal Battle, B-R-E-W-T-A-L, Battle. Um, and this, this nice salty senbai would go very well with some, with some beer. I love that crunch. Love senbai. Love salt, love crunch. I'm a texture guy. So, that's a good one. All right. I'm feeling better already. I already found something I like. I do have to drink water after that, though, because that salt level is high. But it's good. It's good. All right, let's go here now. This, I believe, is the Hojicha Florentine. I think this is what it's supposed to be. Yes. Hojicha Florentine. On the other side, I don't really have anything. So, uh, wafers topped with honey glazed almond and hojicha tea, tea cream. The hojicha is from the tea farms in the Shizuoka Prefecture, which is known to produce some of the most premium teas in Japan. Okay. This actually looks like it could be pretty good and sounds like it could be good. Just in case of crumbs, I got to open it over my plate that I brought here. Oh, this is... No, it actually looks gross. <laughs> Look at this. That looks nasty, actually. That looks gross. But it smells... I mean, I smell the tea to it, for sure. Other than that, it smells like kind of grainy and tea and a little bit of chocolate. Is it supposed to be chocolate? I don't know.
It has nice texture, I will say that, because those little pieces inside here are pretty crunchy. The outside's more of like a really easy um, to, to cut through wafer. Ooh, dropping crap on the floor. Oh, well, sorry. Hmm. So, so there's a sweetness to it. It's definitely a bit sugary. I definitely taste that tea, and the tea, the tea flavor actually is pretty good. It's not coming off as like a matcha. It's it's way less vegetal. It's just more of like a kind of a light tea flavor. It doesn't taste chocolatey. Well, maybe just a slight bit, but it's the honey. That sweetness from the honey definitely comes through. Um, I don't love it. I don't dislike it. It's decent. I'm I, I'm okay with it. I'm not gonna have a problem finishing this off. I'm not going to do it on camera, but it's fine. It's fine, especially for something primarily focused on tea. I'm all right with that. Not bad. Okay, let's go to this, whatever this is next. I'm probably going to have to open this to figure out what it is first. I think this is the hojicha waffle is my guess. Hojicha waffle. Nothing on the back. A few of these. Oop. Okay, well, that's not opening the best way. The thing came off. I'm going to have to open this in the worst way possible. Oh, no. Is this? Oh, no, it's not. It's not the Hoji. What the hell? It just fell apart. It's not the Hojicha waffle. It's actually the Hojicha Lange de Chop. So, as you can see, the other part of the cookie fell off. You know, that's what happens in transit, so... But it's kind of better because you can see a better kind of cross-section of what's on there. You can see that cream in there. So this is Delicate Hojicha Infused Butter Cookie from Kyoto's Tea Growing Region. Hojicha chocolate is sandwiched between roasted tea-flavored soy butter cookies. One of our favorite cookies from Kyoto. Ooh, kind of smells like white chocolate and tea mixed together. I smell the butter, too. I smell that butter cookie. It's a little sweet, but it's not crazy sweet. I'm going in for it. It kind of like starts to melt immediately. Definitely tastes like white chocolate mixed with tea. The tea is more at a medium level on this. So it's a little bit more vegetal. So it's not my favorite, but... I think that the kind of butteriness of the cookie and that white chocolate kind of balances it out a little bit. Yeah. That's all right. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. I wouldn't intentionally want more of them. I wouldn't be like, ooh, send me more of that. Because the tea flavor actually starts to build a little bit more as you keep eating. Mm. Yeah. All right, eh, not a huge fan. All right, what are these? What is this? Let me figure this one out. This thing is, it's a big cake. I think this might be the matcha milk manju, but I'm gonna, I mean, it looks like it's matcha on the front. So when I see that like really green powder, I usually think matcha. So yeah, I think this is the matcha milk manju. It's like one of these cake things. Okay, we've had things like this before. So, it's very green. That would indicate matcha, buddy. Uh, it's very soft. It's very, very soft. Uh, Bite-sized manju cake stuffed with matcha cream white bean filling. The matcha used for this snack is hand-picked by farmers in Fukuoka and Okinawa. It smells like matcha. It's so vegetal. So much matcha. Matcha just smells like aggressively green. God, I don't like that smell. All right. Um, this has a few things working against it for me personally. One, the matcha flavor. Two, that little bit of weird bitterness that goes along with matcha sometimes. Three, the texture because it's bean paste but this bean paste in particular is a little more jelly-ish 
than it is grainy like bean paste is. Although it does taste a little buttery on the finish. Which, I kind of like that buttery note. It's too much matcha to it, though. It's too much matcha. No, thank you. Yeah. Ah. No, thank you. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Pass. Pass. That's probably, for me personally, one of the most offensive things that they've had in this in in any of the snackers I've gotten, and that's including like shrimp stuff. I can handle that better. All right, let's let's you know. Speaking of shrimp stuff, I have one here that's a shrimp shrimp senbai. Rice crackers made with powdered dry shrimp caught off the Sea of Japan. This one is like really beat up, obviously, but you can see the sh oh sorry, you can see the shrimp. Yeah, pretty easy to see that shrimp on there. All right, so let's pull a little piece out. I bet you're gonna be able to see the little pieces of shrimp in there. You always can. See, there you go. Those little flecks in there. Little shrimp. It smells like shrimp. It's very oceany, very fishy. A lot of crunch. Tastes like shrimp. There's a decent saltiness to it. I love the crunch on that. It's a little heavy on the shrimp flavor, to be honest. Um, if you're okay with that, you're going to be fine with that particular one. But it's a little high for me personally on the shrimp flavor. We've had a few like shrimp snacks in in the the snacku that like the shrimp is kind of like on a lower level or like a medium low level, and I'm good with that. But this one is a little higher. I had that flavor out of my mouth now too. <laughs> this is not going the best. Okay, so this is the hojicha waffle. We're gonna do this one now. Now the hojicha waffle. There you go. Uh, twice baked hojicha infused waffles filled with a lightly sweetened hojicha cream. Morahan has been making these snacks since 1836. That's a while. That's a long while. All right, here we go. These look cool. Oh, the way they feel, they're probably gonna have some good crunch to them. But then that also means I'm gonna make a pretty significant mess. Hmm, they smell, they kind of smell like waffles a little bit, but it's like a mix of like that waffle, that typical like baked waffle smell and tea. Cause I assume it's a tea cream. All right. Here comes the mess. I like the crunch and flavor of the waffle cookie portion, and it's sweet. It's like a little bit sugary. It tastes pretty good, and then you get that little hint of tea in the middle. There you go. You can see the tea in there. It's not too bad. Um, the tea isn't crazy pronounced. Oh, here. I can see the cream a little bit better. There you go. It looks gross. It looks like brown green, so it actually looks like, you know, like baby crap. <laughs> That's the thing. It's okay. I'm not like a big fan, but I don't hate it. I actually really like those waffle cookie pieces. Those are really awesome. You put a different type of cream inside there, like one of those awesome strawberry creams that they do. Like February in Japan, that would be killer. Yeah, I like the cookie portion of that. Okay, moving on. What is this? What is this? Oh, I got two of those. It's like, I only got one. No. Azuki matcha. Damn, more matcha. <clears throat> Sweet azuki red beans from Hokkaido covered with matcha green tea chocolate made in Kyoto. It's one of these kind of like, you know... Pyramid packs. Tear that open. So literally, it's like little red beans covered in white chocolate and matcha on the outside. So it's like matcha. So it's very vegetal. A little bit of sweetness. Mm. 
You know what? I actually don't really taste the matcha that much on this. The flavor of the red bean and the white chocolate combined to really overpower that matcha. I get it very slightly, so I'm I'm good. I actually kind of like that. I'm usually not huge on white chocolate either, but for some reason, the way white chocolate's done in Japan, I like it a lot more than in the United States. Maybe a part of that has to do with, like, a lot of candy, especially, like, chocolates in the United States, taste very chemical-driven, and in Japan, they really don't. They're also a lot sweeter, so. No, I actually dig these. Um, it's a nice little snack. I like that. Plus, you're getting protein because there's beans in there, man. Hopefully, it doesn't cause a problem, if you know what I mean. All right, here's a big bag of something that I'm kind of afraid of. It, look, it looks a little weird. It's called Satori Matcha. Look at this. Doesn't that look like... It looks intimidating. Okay, so it is Airy Matcha Cream Dipped Biscuits. So much matcha smell. So much. Yep. It smells like matcha. There's like a little bit of a sugary sweetness, and then it smells like matcha. Um, I think it'll be crunchy, though. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow. Um, I actually kind of like that. There is matcha. But once again, just like those beans I just had, there's a white chocolate that's coating the thing that is overtaking the flavor of the matcha, which I really like. And the actual, like, biscuit of it is just, like, this really light, fluffy thing once you chew through it. Like, it's a little bit crunchy, but it's kind of fluffy. Like, it's the consistency of, like, the really puffed che uh, Cheetos. That's what it's the consistency of, and it actually tastes kind of like that without the, the cheese on it. Yeah, it's got like this kind of nice like corn type cereal note. Kind of tastes like a corn pop, you know that, without all the sugar. I kind of like that. It's actually kind of good. Wow. Okay, I was afraid of that one. I thought I was definitely going to hate it. That was actually pretty solid. I like it. Once again, there's something about the Japanese white chocolate that, like, I'm actually on board, you know? Okay, we're winding down. We got, I've got, like, two more things, and then we're done here. I feel like I'm going faster than normal. Maybe it's because I just want to get through it, because, you know. Matcha balm roll. B-A-U-M. Balm. Matcha balm. I don't know which way it goes. Oh, like that. The picture would indicate it to me, right? Okay, so... The Muramaki period of Japan, 14th to 15th century, was when tea culture was popularized in Japan. And with the advent of tea ceremonies, confectionaries that would be eaten alongside the tea began to be increase in popularity. Madaseika was founded in 1924 to keep this tradition alive, and the shop is now one of the most influential snack stores in all of Kyoto. That's cool enough. Let's see. Get this open with minimal. Okay, this this one's gonna get messy. I, we've I've had a, one of these bombs before. Actually, we've had it at least two times. Um, they're kind of like these. You remember like they're cakey, and it's like really small. So you can see like these really thin layers here, of like cake, and then a cream on the inside. <sighs> smells like matcha though. Dang it! This is a little bit sweet and matcha. There's a theme here. I like the I like the texture of the buttercream on the inside. It's soft on the outside. Then you get that nice, real fluffy, smooth buttercream on the inside. But there's a decent matcha flavor to it. So if you like matcha, it's like matcha mixed with vanilla. That's the flavor I'm getting from the cream in there. So I like the vanilla aspect of it, but the matcha is a little too high for my personal taste. But if you're good with matcha, or if you really like matcha, you would probably love this. Like, this is amazing, almost, for a person who likes, like, some matcha flavor. I can see where people like that. Um, my wife might like it. I don't know how she... Actually, I don't really know how she feels about matcha, to be honest. 
we haven't really talked matcha before. So let's get to our last thing. Um, traditional Yuji or Uji candies. Variety of candies all handmade by a tiny candy shop in Uji, Kyoto. Flavors include Kyoto Maple, Matcha Powder, Gyokuro Matcha, and Hoji Tea. Hojicha Tea. Uh, can I get the Kyoto Maple, please? That's what I want to try. I want to try the Kyoto Maple, but I don't know which one's which. Because look. There's a bunch of different... I feel like this one this one might be safe because it would be least matcha-y because it's least green. This would probably be... I mean, I feel like this would be the maple, but I don't know. All right, look. All right, I'm just going to go for this one because maybe it's the maple and I kind of want to try that. But I might be making a big mistake, to be honest. What's it smell like? I don't know. I can't smell anything. It smells a little vegetal. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Okay. It's matcha. No, thank you. It's not crazy, though. I was actually, when I first figured out, oh, it's matcha, I was expecting that it would build a lot more and be like super, super matcha. It's not. It's actually a much lower level than I think. So if people like just, you know, kind of a bit of matcha, that's cool. But for me, I'm not into it because the only flavor is matcha. So it's not my thing. Uh, but once again, like with these hard candies, I'm always amazed at how low the sugariness of them are. Because something equivalent to this in the United States would be like crazy sugary, just crazy sweet. That's why I can't eat it. But because it just, it kills me in my, in my old age. But um, these I can do. Not this one in particular because of the matcha, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to keep that so my wife can lick it. But I don't think she's going to want to. <laughs> Just because I don't think she's going to be turned on by a matcha hard candy. So, okay. Well, that was it. Uh, what were my favorites in this? Uh, the story matcha actually very surprised by those these things those were actually pretty pretty darn tasty and obviously that salty senbai let me yeah this one the salty senbai um probably my favorite i know that's kind of boring oh and also these um these little red beans i was pretty surprised by those i like these i'll munch on these as just like a little snack i'll take them to work that'll be good so <sighs> this is one of my least favorite boxes as people could probably guess just because all the matcha stuff it's not my thing um, yeah, I like the jelly box better. That was, that was a lot more fun. I was nervous about that box too, but that ended up being a lot more tasty and fun than this matcha one. But, you know, that's what happens. I'm still holding out for a, uh, like strictly Senbai box. That's what I would love. I would, oh, man, I would love one. Especially like those twice baked ones that are just like kind of sugary and salty at the same time. Uh, I... I want that. I want that so bad. But I love Snacku. If people can't tell, I'm going to keep going with it. I enjoy doing these videos, even though they don't get a crazy amount of views. But if you're watching this, thank you very much for checking these out. It always encourages me when I see that there are some views on these things because I like doing this. Put some comments down there. Do you get Snacku? Should you get Snacku? What do you like snacks wise, J Japanese or otherwise? Um, hit that subscribe for me, though, if you're not a subscriber. Uh, that's the way you can repay me for putting my time and money into these things because I'm not making money or anything. I just want to grow the channel so I can interact with more people, you know, get my reviews of movies out there, my box reviews out there, stuff like that. And then if I eventually get to a point where I can make some money, maybe I'll add boxes, um, potentially more food boxes. I thought about potentially getting a uh, boxu, which is another Japanese snack box, which looks pretty good. It doesn't look on the same level of what I like, like Snacku gives me typically, but it, it looks like just like a little bit under that. So I would consider that one maybe. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.